Down in the southernmost state of Mexico, 200 miles from the Guatemalan border, up in the mountains where the Chimula Indians live, is nestled Colegio Linda Vista. The road to the school winds in and out among the evergreen pines and oaks that are covered with hundreds of air plants, such as the beautiful bromeliads and orchids. Native boys follow the trails through the forest, and the cattle find living and joy as they munch the edible shrubs and grass. The 5,000 foot elevation keeps the climate always cool and invigorating. Most of the students improve in health and do not suffer from the tropical diseases prevalent in the lowlands. The rainy season is from the last part of April till November with an average rainfall of 100 inches per year. The bell in the former Catholic Church Tower used to ring on special fiesta days and for morning and evening mass. But now it begins the days at Linda Vista with the 6.30 breakfast call, 7 o'clock classes, and on through the day till the 6.30 supper bell in the evening. Sometimes it rings for special programs and other occasions. Boys must hurry up the trail from their school home when it rings for mealtime. The doors close 15 minutes after the bell rings, and Mountain Living gives them an appetite for more black beans and tortillas. Students relax, breathe a few breaths of fresh air, get in a few friendly punches, and some even cram a bit more knowledge during the five minute break between classes. Secondary students are in class in the morning and primary students in the afternoon. Mrs. Kelly, the math teacher, and Mrs. Allred, the English teacher, hurry to and from classes. El Camino Real, first traveled by Cortez, is still used by the Indians, and it crosses the school campus. The girls must hurry in to gather up books for classes. Fifty of them live upstairs in the east end of this building. Their new home is becoming a reality, as boys have begun construction and plans are to have it ready for the next school term. The girls keep busy in the kitchen, bakery, laundry, and dormitory. Pastor Leon and David Guzman from the local conference office are laying plans with Mr. Kelly, the director of the school, for the coming week of prayer. Carl Montgomery put in this bridge while on one of his visits to the school several years ago. The rains keep this little creek full, and the boys have to cross it many times a day as they travel back and forth from their home to classes, work, and meals. This home is built for a young married couple, but this year it is used as a home for 12 junior boys. Girls look up from relaxing in their backyard at the sound of the cameraman. Miguel Hidalgo, an industrious student, is preparing for his next class. This home was built for the All Reds. Although it isn't completely finished, it is a mansion compared to the tent and the one room they lived in before they moved in. The two original ranch buildings were outgrown the first year, and this large one was built to serve as auditorium, dining room, kitchen, bakery, laundry, and temporary girls' dormitory. It is the center of activity for all social and religious gatherings. Holidays in Mexico seem to come almost every day. There is a saint for every day of the year, but some days are more important than others, and it is on some of these important ones that Linda Vista students have a field day or picnic. The Mexican flag flying above the trees signifies a national holiday. The month of May has three very important holidays and several less important ones. To the average student, they are all important. Activities are planned by a special committee of the teachers and upper grade students. The director is leading the students in a grand march. The music is recorded Mexican marimba music. These boys have been out in the mountains cleaning brush and found two beautiful bromeliads, one of the most exquisite of air plants. They gave them to us to hang in our living room. Balvino Santos, a student from British Honduras is running the planner. It was a gift from Monterey Bay Academy. Balbino has charge of the carpenter shop the past five years. He started in the fifth grade and will graduate from the ministerial worker course next year. Under his direction, all the doors, windows, cabinet work, desks, 
beds, and many other things have been made for the homes and school buildings. The brick factory has been operating the past five years under the leadership of Mr. Ramirez and his family from Oaxaca. All of the roof tile and brick we now use are produced here. The boys learn the whole process of mixing the proper proportions of clay, sand, horse manure, and water. They put the brick in the sun to dry, and if it begins to rain, they have to be hauled in. Some of the ministerial students have worked in the tile factory to learn the trade so that they will be useful in helping to build churches and schools in whatever district they may find themselves. Horse manure is purchased from the Indians for three pesos a sack. That's 24 cents in U.S. currency. It serves as a wick to carry the moisture evenly out of the brick. The kiln is made of adobe brick with a roof over it to keep out the rain. It holds 2,000 brick or 3,000 tile, which are stacked in such a way that each one will fire evenly. You will notice boys cleaning up the broken tile and brick, and Indians walking through. Also, a neat pile of roof tile. The kiln is fired with old dead pine wood, as it seems to be the best for firing the kiln. It takes eight hours of firing to burn an oven load of brick or tile. Here the boys are hauling and piling brick for use in the new dormitory. The girls' home has been a dream for the past five years, and the latest news is that the roof has just been put on the first half of it. With the new dormitory, there will be a balance of girl students, as their enrollment will increase. The boys working here are nearly all ministerial students. They knew nothing of construction when they came, but the ones you see laying the brick can do a good job now, and could qualify as an experienced bricklayer most anywhere. Some of the boys learn the building methods from the foundation to the finish, and it is the ambition of Roberto Sanchez to be able to work like Mr. Allred someday. We hope he'll dedicate his services to building for the Mexican Union, as there is a growing need for such men. This little cement mixer is one of the pioneers of Linda Vista, and it has mixed the concrete for nearly 100,000 square feet of floors during the past five years. With plans for a new church, more homes, library, the new biological station for Loma Linda University, it is doubtful if it will be able to take its retirement when it should. Pastor Juan Hill from the Navajoa School came to Linda Vista this year and is heading up the construction of the girls' dormitory. The boys working for him are primary and secondary students and prospective workers. The first semester, Secondary students go to classes in the morning and work in the afternoon. The second semester, they work in the morning and study in the afternoon because of the afternoon rains. It is surprising how much they accomplish with this program. When Roberto Sanchez came to Linda Vista, he couldn't understand Spanish, and for a while we wondered if he would ever learn. His determination has gotten him through grade school, and now he is studying secondary. He has plenty of hardships, but with encouragement he keeps going. In the spring months when it is dry, we have to keep alert for fires that spread from Indians burning their cornfields, or from a native leaving a small fire after he has cooked his meal. This one was started when the men who were making lime let a burning log roll down the hill and just left it. The machete the boys are using to put out the fire is the most useful tool folk down here use. They use it for everything. A man would be lost without it, as one in the U.S. would feel without a pocket knife. From these pictures, you can see that it never gets very dry, so a fire, if taken care of, seldom gets out of control. The boys are notified, and they prepare for going out to fight the fire. The bell rings to call them to come to the shop and get their tools. If the fire is big, the machetes, hoes, shovels, all go out, one to a boy. Students use the horses on campus for rounding up the cattle, and some of them are used by the boys who go out on missionary trips to the villages in the mountains on Sabbaths. Over the fence is one of our gardens, one of the best things at Linda Vista. 
It has taken time to teach the boys how to get the best results from a garden. All the work is done by hand with shovels and big hoes. The three months of dry season is the best time for a garden. Some irrigating has to be done. A wooden trough is used to carry the water from the spring over this stretch of sandy soil. Linda Vista is blessed with plenty of spring water. Gravity flow to all of the buildings. The school kitchen and the families were supplied with beautiful cucumbers from this patch for several months. Carrots used to rot in the ground during the wet season, but now the boys have learned to use all the fertilizer they can get and the results are rewarding. This boy is proud of his fine looking product. Those who work in the garden get a lot of satisfaction from their work. The boys dormitory was the first building to go up. Mr. Herbert Ruckel spent a month helping put up the framework. The past two years it has been outgrown. This year 150 boys are stacked seven in a room. 30 junior age boys are living in two other smaller houses with separate supervision. Our boys come from every type of home and situation. Most of the younger boys are cash students as we cannot provide a heavy work program for children. Each year we will have to accept additional younger students as the older ones will leave. As the educational system in Mexico improves, it will be the younger ones who will fill our school. The Mexican Union is stressing the importance of church schools in connection with their churches. During this past year, we know of four schools that have been established. Each morning and afternoon, the boys meet to receive their work assignment and tools. They always have prayer before separating. Some will go to the farm, others construction, machine shop, carpenter shop, or wherever their boss assigns them. These cows are on their way to green pastures after spending a quiet night away from vampire bats. The cows have been carefully milked and cared for by Tirso Cruz and his helper. The jerseys in the picture were a gift from Dr. DeWitt of Texas. The two Holstein bulls and heifer were brought down from Monte Morelos, and the rest are good local stock that have been purchased or traded for. A good bull calf from the purebred brown Swiss bull and the jerseys is worth two good heifers from the local ranches. The herd has grown till there are over 100 head. The cattle business seems to be the best investment and business industry for the school, located as it is in the mountains. We plan to increase the herd to three or 400 depending on how well and how fast the pastures can be put in to provide for them. Every year new ground is cleared and planted with African giant grass. Experiments are being done with several different types of grasses to determine which is best for the area. The young cattle are dehorned, but the older ones are privileged to keep theirs. In Genesis, we read about Jacob's ring-streaked and striped cattle. Some of these look like they could be descendants, and we call them Jacob's cows. They seem to be hardier than the others, and some of them promise to be pretty good milk stock. Vacona means big cow. This black one has just had her eighth calf in six years. Vacona is queen of Linda Vista Acres, and proudly goes wherever she wishes. Tirso has been with us for three years and is the best cowboy we have had. He and his two helpers ride the range every other day. They treat the cows for ticks and cuts and check their water supply. It is Sabbath and some 300 Linda Vistans have just enjoyed the Sabbath services and are heading to their various homes. Jacobo Savignon told of his assignment to the difficult town of Comitan where there are no Seventh-day Adventists and where Kolpoters and other missionaries have been chased out. Three or four times a year there is a baptism at Linda Vista. One hundred young men and women have accepted the truth and have been baptized in this tank during the past five years. About 40 people from the neighborhood have received Jesus as their savior and now belong to a growing church in Pueblo Nuevo, the nearest town. These souls heard the truth from students who faithfully visited their homes every Sabbath. Students, with help from the school pastor, look after the church and lead out in Sabbath services. 
When visitors come from the U.S., they like to visit the Pueblo Nuevo Church, sitting on their backless benches. They see how interested the native people are when they hear our wonderful truth as it is presented to them so simply and beautifully. This big building represents Linda Vista to several hundred Mexican youth. Here they are fed physically, mentally, and spiritually. So far, 40 have graduated and 15 have already filled useful places in God's work. Others continue their studies at Montemorelos, preparing themselves to be teachers, nurses, businessmen, ministers, and other areas they feel called to serve. Linda Vista is grateful to people like Dr. Booth, Dr. Jesse, the Stithams, the Adams, and many others who have helped in providing for our needs as they arose. The next big projects include building the church that was planned for construction last year and to finance the transportation and installation of the hydroelectric plant that people in Washington have donated to the school. Big projects? Yes. But God says, ask and ye shall receive. He also says, I will supply all your needs. So it is with faith and perseverance that students and teachers work together to make Linda Vista a soul-winning and soul-saving institution.